It was always surprises. You never knew really know what, what's, what's going to happen next, which was a fun part of him. He was a fun man to be married to. You know, he studied Rockefeller and uh, all those big American success stories, all the books. You know, he had so many, all of these libraries just full of books of, of famous men, big people he was admired very much. Larger than life character, a businessman of the old school, the kind you don't really meet that often, even then and uh, today almost 20 years later even more seldom and uh, someone who was really felt very present, very uh, engaging to, to interview and always with a, an extremely positive uh, spirit that made a, made a big impression. Yeah, big thinker, he liked big projects, you know, he's always swinging for the fences. He was an unbelievable optimist, unbelievable risk taker, you know, and what I learned, I mean, everything was always a solution to a problem. And he took giant gambles, you know, a lot, a lot of times we didn't have the money to commit to the project we have, we committed them and somehow we always found the money. To take risk, not be afraid of taking risk. I think that's what I, that's a big thing I learned from him, to take big risk and then also go for big, big opportunities, whether it was oil field elephants or very, very big assets. We were involved in Russia, big country, you know, connected with tons of risk, but uh, there were also fantastic opportunities. I learned that a sense of humor is absolutely essential in this business. It's high risk, high reward, and uh, you need those breaks. I learned about the importance of loyalty, for sure. I mean, Adolf was so loyal to the people that worked with him and stuck with him and, and uh, helped him achieve the successes that he did. He was a great um, coach. You know, look for the blue sky and go for it. Uh, don't shy away from it. And, uh, you know, I think especially once I inherited the stuff, uh, the asset in Congo, which is obviously a high-risk environment, I think his, you know, his coaching encouraged me to, you know, push out there in a way that I never would have in a past career. And this is what I learned early on, because I always worked with families, then, you know, he gave us love, leeway, you know, so we did a lot of stuff. I lived in the Middle East and basically ran everything myself and called father once a week. So we, we did a lot of mistakes, but we learned a lot of things through the, through the experiences. I think, you know, you know, the first 10 years were quite painful because you know, the learning curve was quite steep, but from all those mistakes, we learned what to do right. You know, I think so it was a very beneficial school, but probably very expensive for my father. <laughs> because we had, uh, you know, he, he put a lot of trust in us, you know, and um, gave us so much uh, responsibility. I think he, do, he, he basically empowered people. He, he gave people uh, a lot of confidence in themselves. But he was always also there. If there was an issue, he would, he would step in and, uh, and be part of it. We were more partners than working for each other, for sure. We were definitely working together you know, on most projects. Early on, I was guided, but then at, uh, I think quite too quickly we became partners. You know, we, we shared the success and failures together. The business was a uh, part of the family and it didn't seem like work and family, it was all intertwined. Like we saw them working and it was fathers and sons working together and they spoke so passionately about it and it was just such second nature. I think, you know, I have ultimate confidence my brother's taking it to the next level like my dad and uncle have. So it's like, it feels very good. When the discovery of uh, discovery was made in um, Qatar, that was the big break, uh, the first big break. Uh, the company was called Gulfstream Resources and that's, that was the first company, I think, that really uh, had success. The first company to be called, to have the, their two name was Lundin Oil. I remember that we had this discussion with Lucas and uh, my dad, and Lucas was, he said, you know, you better not mess this up, you know, if, you're, if you put the family name on the, on the company. And actually, it worked out very well. Lundin Oil was later sold, and now we have Lundin Mining, and we have uh, Lundin Gold, so, so that uh, started to become uh, the norm. When I met him, I was impressed by the fact that he's really listening to the people and trying to understand your opinion and not making any difference between the junior, which I was, and, and uh, quote, obviously the senior that he knew since ever, basically. So, so I find uh, very, you know, open to the discussion and uh, uh, really on top of the things, basically. Adolf Lundin, uh, to, to me, is, is a person who captures a, a, a vibrance for life and business. It's, uh, you know, you hear the saying, 
work hard, play hard. He, he was that. He enjoyed life so much, the, the physical side, the uh, people and everything, but yet he was a very intense businessman. It, it really is that uh, ability to take that level of intensity to both in, to the personal side and the business side. He's the foundation of the empire of the family industry. I think he was really the one who started it all. And uh, I definitely have a little bit of adventurous uh, blood <laughs> coursing through my veins, I would say, to coming from uh, Adolf. We'd always be doing certain things when we go on trips or whatnot, even coming out here in the islands and jumping off the rock or anything, all these adventurous uh, aspects. I think a lot of it comes from, from my grandpa. You know, Adolf had a lot of very wonderful qualities, but, you know, the one quality that really stood out for me was his optimism. He was always up, always energetic, and always full of optimism. And it's, it's that optimism that really allowed him to go out and raise money from very high-risk ventures that uh, most people in the world would shy away from, including the major mining and oil and gas companies. But uh, Adolf had that optimism and enthusiasm that allowed him to go out there and... Uh, describe the, the, the great projects that he was involved in and, and actually raise the money to take on these projects. And that optimism led to his tremendous determination to succeed and to find the world-class projects. It was, uh, he, had, he had a lot of great qualities. For those of us who saw, who had the chance to meet Alof in the early days, he had a, a huge imprint in the way he was conducting business, his, his enthusiasm, obviously his entrepreneur. Everybody knows him as an entrepreneur and a strong entrepreneur. For me, uh, the strongest imprint he made on me was uh, how humble he was. I really recognize him more for that than for, uh, for his, uh, his business as savvy. And, uh, and that really, you know, he, he, was, uh, he was a very motivating person for anyone. He was a true, uh, true internationalist. He, uh, he liked to travel. He, uh, he saw poverty in a lot of countries. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of people that believe that poverty can only be alleviated through uh, foreign aid and, uh, and uh, those kind of actions. But, but all of us on the other side and believe that uh, capitalism, he was a true capitalist, that uh, that was the only thing that could uh, help the poorer countries in the world. And uh, I think that was one of the important driving forces. He came to the conclusion that the best way to, to, to help the fellow man is to go into those countries that need investment and, uh, and develop their resources, help them develop the, their own uh, and, and lift their own uh, living standards. So that's, that's, that was his religion. <laughs> yeah, I know with my grandpa that, you know, what drove him was not uh, creating wealth for himself. He wasn't, you know, materialistic at all. He loved the adventure and he loved the oil and mining industry because the products that, that we produce, you know, is essential to civilization. For those reasons, he truly thought he had the best job in the world. He was very passionate following things and he was very excited by it. So, you know, he, he actually, you know, usually when you drill an offshore well, you talk to the onshore manager, but he was so excited, so he got the number to rig. So he called the onshore, you know, got on the rig floor itself to find out exactly what's going. He was very driven by news and information and instant finding out what's going on all the time. He loved it and he loved his stock coats. He wanted to know what everything closed every night, you know, so it's very, very, very eager to see what's going on. He was very excited, you know, to, of course, he's very excited to find oil and he really enjoyed the whole process. Probably the main thing from him is that when you say you're going to do something, you got to do it. Actions definitely speak louder than words and it's always nice to talk about something, but in reality, a lot of people are going to be saying that they're going to do this or going to do that, but if you say you're going to do something, then follow it through and actually do it. You know, Adolf was a guy that uh, quickly jumped on opportunities and uh, I think uh, he had a, a real sense of uh, timing and uh, always served him well. Yeah, what the real success was, it was guts. You know, it's you know, the saying, no guts, no glory, but you know, Adolf had unlimited guts. He was never afraid to get in and, and do things that other people were shy to do. He, he was interested in going in for projects no matter where they were located in the world. No one wanted to go to the Belgian Congo, but he knew the big Tanki Fungurumi deposit was there. When I was running London Petroleum, it was extremely important that we could differentiate ourselves. We could make decisions quickly. I was always a phone call away from the family and it, it kind of got to the stage where I could make the decision anyway because I knew what their answer was going to be because we'd been together for so long um, and that is really powerful. A lot of companies don't have that power. Um, to be able to run a business for the long term knowing that you've got a major shareholder there, not people who are short term focused, 
who are long-term focused. I think it was like the excitement and just for life and, and, and big projects, you know, and wherever they were. I think he was, you know, he loved it, you know, and he loved it, the adventure of the whole thing. In order to do what he did, he needed to be fit. And I think in order to work with him and to keep up with him, um, fitness was a really important thing to him. Every morning he ran. It wasn't uh, wasn't if we were up late the night before. It didn't matter if we had an early morning meeting. He'd get up even earlier so he could have his 45-minute run. He used to have some sentences that really are an anchor in my mind. One of them was, "When the when the going gets tough, the tough get going." That is always in me, and it's it's really Adolf. Uh, till today, we're trying to to keep this uh, this this spirit going. Well, the only thing I would say is that Adolf will be extremely proud of what they've done in terms of basically taking the whole thing to a different level. What he started is, is still continuing and actually in many ways getting bigger and better. And, and you can even see that now with the third generation with, uh, with those kids coming through and, uh, and, and many family organizations, it, it kind of falls away. And, and there are no signs of it falling away. There's, there's the family and there's the professional managers, I guess, who I'm, I'm one of, who are extremely loyal to the family, who are, um, who are still there, and, and he would have been extremely proud of that. And like the best line was, you know, Adam, if I, if I don't drill, I'm never going to find oil. So it's, if you don't try, you're, not, you're never going to accomplish anything. And yeah, you got to take the risk, but, but go for it. So I'm thinking, I feel very lucky to see all this young generation still having that glow in them to go and do things and, you know, succeed. The only real disappointment we have is that Adolf didn't get to see it through to, to the great success that he had cultivated. And I think everything that grew out of the Lundin group was because of the fertile ground he created. But I do give a lot of credit to his sons, especially Lucas, uh, you know, who came in and, and took it to the next level and, and saw all of it through. The legacy is in the the third and fourth generation that we see now of the family, the work ethic, the, the love of life that uh, you see in, in all the grandchildren that, I, that I've met and, and the extended family. You can see that, that legacy in it. It's through Adolf and his wife Eva, I believe, that have really created that and it continues. It's still very strong today. So I think if people look back to his legacy and I think the legacy of uh, Lucas and Ian since then. You know, there's a great track record there. Adolf Lundin's legacy is that everything is possible, nothing is impossible. You are able to, to make it happen, even if you have some setbacks on the way, just uh, get up on, on the horse again and uh, the world is really yours. Everything is possible. To this day, uh, the people that worked with Adolf uh, miss him still. The world moves forward, you know, so I think he gave us a great legacy. But you know, the, uh, I think now, you know, we've changed a lot, and the companies are bigger, and uh, you know, it's, it's a different game. But I think, uh, I think you have to think the legacy what to give.